welcome to The Art of Pointy Things, a channel where I discuss my adventures in knitting, sewing, embroidery and other similar crafts. I'm Dusty and today I'm doing the eighth episode of my monthly knitting and general creating podcast, though this month is mostly knitting, actually all knitting, um, and it sort of details what I've been up to in the last month since I saw you. Um, so this month I've been very busy finishing off my sample knit for Botanical Yarn, but more on that in a bit. Um, Firstly, what am I wearing? Nothing particularly exciting. You have seen this before. This is my sort of store-bought, fast fashion, oversized house cardigan that I have patched um, multiple times now. And it's just it's just my sort of comfy go-to house cardigan. So nothing exciting there. I do hope to replace it in the future, but... It, mm. um, so uh, anything that I mentioned should be linked down below in the description, so if you see anything you're interested in and you want to go check out more, then go check the description. Uh, so on to my finished objects. So this is the Huhuatonga Pullover by Francoise Denoy, who um, also is known as uh, Rohar Knits. Um, so this is the sample knit I was doing for Botanical Yarn, and you may notice the segment is being recorded before the rest of the video because I need to get this nailed today and I don't have... it's not the end of the month yet so it's not when I normally record my episode so I thought I would sort of film this segment showing it off before I mail it. Um, so the pattern is um, sort of a nice colourwork yoke sweater. Um, the motif is uh, Maori. It's inspired by Aori art and motifs. I did say in the last video it was Hawaiian. I'm wrong. It's Maori. Um, I, I, I wasn't going off notes last episode. Is my <laughs> best excuse I have, um, and so I messed up. So, um, Francoise, a lot of her patterns sort of she's she's Maori heritage. And so a lot of her patterns use and explore their motifs, and this one I think is meant to be is a sweet potato, which signifies abundance. Um, and it goes down across the yoke. It's a really nice pattern, I like a lot of her patterns. Um, she's also recently done a sort of midwinter collaboration with Anushka from the Crimson Stitchery, who was one of my favourite um, knitting creator, content creators online. Um, and they actually did an interview together recently discussing um, Francois' sort of inspiration, which is really interesting. I'm going to link it below and I think you should go watch it. Um, as for what I knit on, so I used 4mm interchangeable circular needles to knit the body and the sleeves and then the rib sections was done. For the collar and the bottom it was done on 3.75mm interchangeable circulars. However, I found with the sleeves, as I was getting towards the bottom, um, I was really struggling on the magic loop. I don't know quite why. I Sometimes I go well with magic loop and sometimes I don't. I think it was because I was trying to alternate skeins. I just had... I don't know what. I was just struggling, so I swapped the DPNs, but I don't have 3.75 DPNs, so the cuff is done on 3.5 DPNs. Um, Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's made much. You still from fit your hand to the hole perfectly fine. My annoyance with I so the four millimeter was the size recommended in the pattern, and I did a bunch of gauge swatches because I know that when you do color work, we've not done color work for a while, your gauge will likely change whilst you're knitting. Um, so I did a lot of swatches, blocked my swatches, and they lied to me because um, I may be overlaying some footage of me wearing this and it's slightly too big and the size is meant to fit me I think it's meant to be a little big on me but it is meant to sort of mostly fit and the main annoyance for me is that it grew so long so from the underarm seam you're meant to go for so long and it's, it's you know it's not a crop sweater it's a full length sweater so it's it's a while um, and just when I put it on it just looks so long and then when I measured it it's only like three three and a half centimeters longer than it should be but it's still stretched lengthwise, and the sleeves have done the same. It's annoying because I did try and do a gauge swatch of just the stockinette, and I think that's the problem. Is you can see you can see a gauge difference between the stockinette and the colour work. 
and I'm wondering if that's it but I anything it looks tighter I don't but my gauge was off and I'm slightly annoyed it's turned out slightly bigger than it should have done um, after blocking but it still looks really nice and you can see as I said hopefully you'll see shots of me wearing it um, so the yarn yes let's discuss the yarn which is from Botanical Yarn, as I said, this is a sample knit from them. Um, I believe it's 75% merino, 25% nylon fingering weight. Um, and the main colour is this sort of, flip it over, you can see it better, this tonal silver grey that's come out beautifully. And I am quite glad I did stripe. I did, um, you, know, you can't really, you can sort of see that I did alternate skeins. But I think it was a good idea because whilst in the balls, as you sort of normally get with hand dyed yarn they all looked the same and then when you knit them up they don't always quite then end up looking the same in the garment so I did alternate skeins for the main body I didn't in the colour work because I was um I think even if it was an issue in the colour work the colour work itself um pulls your eye away from that so as for the it's, this is a fade set um I was given 10 20 gram skeins um to do as a fade throughout the colour work and I think it has turned out absolutely beautiful. So you've got this dark pink through to pale pink, pale purple through to dark purple. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. And it's also a really easy way to do a fade like this, is just having a set of um, these colours. Um, I think she does do a fade set, monthly sort of fade set club. And she also does quite a lot of them just in general. And I think they're really beautiful and they just they just such an easy way to get really pretty patterns there's so many patterns I think that this would look really good in um some of I think it's Jennifer Steingass's recent ones uh, any should be honest any color work yoke that doesn't have sort of distinct that does have a sort of all over pattern I think would look really good with a fade set like this and also didn't take too much I'll hopefully I'll have my Ravelry page up for this already by the time this goes live um and I'll note, make a note of how much of each colour, but I don't think I use more than 10 grams of any one colour in this, and this was the size large, which is sort of a good mid-range size, I think. Um, so that that would work for this. Um, 10 gram skeins would work, I think, for this, and provide quite a good... Because it's quite, it's not... If I show you, it's sort of all the way around. It's not just, it's like the whole yoke, not just a part of it. Um, yeah. Um, I am also, I know some people like to see the inside of colour work, so I am going to quickly turn it inside out. Um, I did, on the longer stretches, I did catch my floats, but on the shorter ones, so that's what the inside looks like. There you go. For, for those of you who enjoy that sort of thing, I'm going to hide all my curtains. Um, yeah, so I'm now going to go mail this, because uh, I think the post office is opening soon, so I need to go mail this. Uh. So my next finished object is, I do actually have a second finished object, which is unusual for me, I normally just have the one. The Owly Socks by Julie Elschwich Schumacher. Um, I have finally, finally got around to finishing them. Um, I honestly didn't think I would this month because the jumper took me up to the end of the month. Um, and I didn't think I'd have time, but honestly, just like last night and the day before, I just sort of sat down and I was like, I just want to... And I, I figured out the, the cable pattern now. So the one thing I haven't done, which I have considered doing, is duplicate stitching in little eyes. But it seems like a lot of work and I can't really bother and I kind of like them just the way they are. So, yeah. So, uh, you can check out my previous videos for more information on these. But as a quick recap, um, these were knit on 2.5mm circular needles. Well, one of them was knit on DPNs, one of them was knit on circulars. They don't actually seem to that that different. I don't know which one's which. Um, Honestly, with the cabling, I actually much preferred the circular magic loop method. Um, they weren't on small circulars, it was uh, magic looping them. And I actually much preferred that um, 
than doing it on the deep ends. I found it a lot easier as, uh, than swapping constantly between them, especially because I was on wooden deep ends, which is very grippy, and it actually made the cables very difficult. Um, ways I found them quite difficult. So, um, but at the same time, I've used sort of magic loop for other things, as I mentioned with the sleeves and the hoo hoo tanga. I just didn't necessarily get on with magic loop with that. I found it a lot easier to swap to DP ends at small circumference. So, in all honesty, I think I'm going to experiment in different types of, you know, stockinette cables, lace, and see what I sort of prefer for that technique. Probably going to be a lot of experimenting. Um, Long-time viewers will also recognise that I'm sort of showing off something else. I will talk a bit more in detail about the sock blockers I have in the acquisition section. But yes, I do now have sock blockers, and so I can now show off my socks very nicely. So they're called the owly because you've got this little owl cable motif. Top of the head, the bottom of the head, and then the body. And I think it's adorable, and I love owls. So, win-win for me. Um, oh, and the yarn. The yarn is... Uh, 80% superwash BFL, 20% bamboo, um, and I dyed it myself using rhubarb and nettles, and I have a video on that which I will, I mean, yeah, so that's the art. I'm, as I said, if you want, you know, I, I've, there's not a lot to say about them, they're socks, cable socks. I can't wait to cancel another pair of sort of funky socks, I do quite like having them just to knit on, because once you figure out the pattern, there's so many rows that you just sort of get into the groove of it because it is such a tight gauge on socks. So, yes. Um, if you are enjoying yourself so far, then please leave a like below and maybe a comment and consider subscribing. On to my works in progress. So, the first thing I'm going to mention almost in passing is my knitted sweater vest, which has had no progress. A, because I had to steal the needles and cable for the Huhu Atanga and I've not actually returned them. Um, also, I only really finished it a few days ago and my plan is to get back onto this. So, you know, probably later today, I will be swapping the needle, needles and cables back out um, and getting on with this. It is covered in dog hair. You'd think I'd be letting the dog roll around in it, but no, no. Um, but yeah, check out last month's video if you want a bit of a recap on this. But it's still going. We plan to be still going, it's just not made a lot of progress because I had to focus so much on the Hoover Tonga. Um, right, and then a new cast on, which I have mentioned as if you watched my um, project plans for 2022, one of the things I mentioned was I wanted to make at least, maybe not finish, well definitely not finish, but make a start on the Coziest Memory Blanket by Templar Cray, I believe. So it is a square blanket, a blanket made of squares, um, but you pick up the stitches and then knit, you pick up all of these and then you knit a square, a mitered square. Though of course along the bottom you pick up and cast on or cast on and pick up. Um, and this is where I am. I don't have a lot done on it. So um, it's a scrap yarn project, so I'll you know, my plan is to use the scraps. I've got a bag here, it's in one of my wool warehouse bags of just sort of sock yarns. My plan is to use them. Um, I'm probably going to do multiple squares of each colour just to sort of use up, especially some of the small scraps. Some of the larger balls I've got, I'll probably end up knitting mitts out of, but I will, like, for example, I've got quite a lot of this, which is the Robin colourway from West Yorkshire Spinners on their sock base. Um, I've got quite a lot of this left over, so I might make a pair of mitts or something out of that. Um, but then I've still got it in the blanket as well. Um, you probably also notice that there's a, quite a bit of cream, and the idea is to do cream alternating squares. And the reason why... I feel like I'm talking very fast today. Um, the reason why it's taking me so long to cast this on, even though I've got plenty of scraps, is because I wanted to use these cream colours in between, because... I, whilst I think that some of the blankets I've seen online where the colours are right next to each other look really good, I know that I have, I would have a thing about making sure the colours that sit next to each other go together and I think I would get too caught up in trying to make sure that the colours work next to each other and that they don't look too weird or too clashy but don't look the same 
and I think I would get very caught up in that. So the idea is to have these cream squares and so it doesn't matter that I've put a blue and a sort of brownie base next to each other because they've got the cream that sort of balances it out. Um, the main thing was I didn't want the cream to be consistent so I wanted to get one of the sort of big wool cones um, and I had my eyes on woolly knit for a while which is what these are. I was just sort of waiting uh, and then you'll find out in my acquisitions I, I may have put an order in with them. Uh, Crea Bear sort of, if you know the Crea Bear podcast you'll know that she's recently started the cone along in, in collaboration with Woolly Knits and she had a discount code and I just couldn't say no. Um, so I picked up a cone of cream to use for this and I ended up casting it on. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far, Just it's just very therapeutic, just knit and then do a square. I started this as again the last couple of days but definitely sort of a good evening watch TV in it I think. Um, I, I'm going to discuss the needles because I'm slightly amused by them, I don't know why. These are sort of from my grandmother's needle collection I just picked up. But my grandmother's needle collection? These are size 12 needles! I don't know if you can, there you go, size 12, woohoo! Um, yeah! Of course they're UK size 12, which I've discovered there is a UK size numbering system that I keep having to look up because no matter how much I look it up I keep forgetting what size these are. These are 2.75mm needles or UK size 12! Um, but I remember when I first got these needles I got very confused when I looked up online trying to figure out what a size 12 was. I can't remember what a size 12 was in the US sizing scheme but it's not 2.75 and so I was very confused. Um, but it turns out these are the UK because my grandmother is British. And these are probably ridiculously old knowing her. I don't know when she picked up knitting but she definitely wasn't still knitting by the time I was born. So yeah. Don't know how old these needles are but you know making a blanket out of them. So that's that. Yeah oh I am aware that I'm going to have to be careful washing this. A I'm using different wool types and B having the cream like I've got the cream next to a dark brown here and I sort of admit that over the years it probably will eventually bleed in but my hope is that if I wash it carefully I shouldn't get too much bleeding. I think the first time I I don't know if I'll, I don't know how big I'm going to make it first. I want to make quite a big one. I want to sort of make a bed cover style thing. Um, but honestly it will depend how much scraps I've got really. And also how much of the cream I've got. As I said I sort of want to, you know, I don't want to have different colour lots of the cream. I want to use just the one cream cone I've got. And theoretically I mean, I've got a 500 gram cone that I will earmark specifically for this project. And that should get me, you know, a lot of squares of just the cream. So it shouldn't be something I should be too concerned about. But when I wash it I am going to have to be careful and the first time I wash it I may have to get those colour catching sheets or something, I'm not really sure, just to try and reduce any bleeding between the squares onto the cream because I think that will ruin the effect I'm going for. But at the same time if it happens, it happens. Um, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you knew that I had considered these things, you know, it's not I'm not blind to the idea that using cream. There was a part of me that wanted to use black, um, but I thought it would be a very. Because I'm one of these people who's like black goes with everything, but I just wasn't, I wasn't entirely, entirely convinced. Um, I've got a feeling this is going to be quite a short episode because that's all my works in progress. Because as I said, I sort of finished the Hoover Tonga and I've got the other stuff that I've been sort of working on. But anyway, on to the exciting part, which is acquisitions. If you if you don't want to watch acquisitions, that's fine. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like before you go. But um, I'm going to go for my acquisitions. So last month, I said that I was going to push out my birthday presents to this month because I didn't think I was going to be buying any yarn in February, and I thought it would sort of still allow the segment to go ahead. Except as I've just mentioned, I did actually make a purchase this month, so it's going to be quite a, hopefully quite a big acquisition section. So on to the first thing, the elephant in the room, what I've already mentioned, I now have sock blockers! Woohoo! Um, I've been considering them for a while, mainly because of, like, you don't need to block socks. It's mainly because of this YouTube channel, it just makes it easier to show them off. So all I did was I went onto Etsy and I typed in 
UK size 7 sock blockers because I am a UK size 7 shoe. Um, I sort of scrolled around, I checked out the different things and one of them was just this very simple laser cut out with sheep. And you know you get all sorts of funky patterns and flowers and I was just like but sheep! Um, I couldn't see any with owls on, I would have gone with owls. So this is from, again it'll be linked below, it's Smirnoff Designs on Etsy. Um, and yeah, it's just a salt blocker. So it sort of boulders out with the toe a bit, but meh. Um, but they're very cute and you just, you know, good for displaying. It's, it's something that's been on, I sort of have stupid things like this on my wish list and then my parents buy me stupid things like this. Um, as I said, I don't really feel that, you know, I mean, yeah, with the cables, I think blocking is possibly a useful thing, but it's not necessary. I just like, it. I can display them. And if I really wanted to, and I had some really fancy socks and I had a reason to, I could hang them up in my sewing room and then my knitting room, sewing room, knitting room, and sort of have them as a display. However, I will be wearing these. I am very happy I've now filmed the podcast so I can now wear them. Um, on to the next presents I received which is some hand dyed yarn. So these are all the same yarn dye. Mothy and the Squid. She does beautiful yarn. Um, she's also very fun to follow on Instagram. She does post a lot about, um, I can't, uh, about sort of current events and um, disability awareness small business awareness, all sorts of very interesting things. Her posts, you know, they're very pretty, they show all the yarn off, but reading her posts is always very, very interesting. Uh, she, she doesn't hold back about sort of the struggle she faces. And I think it's very, very good to sort of see that. So I like her. Um, I didn't realize when I, there's a lot of a theme going on, a sort of cream with speckles, isn't there? I promise she does more than just cream with speckles. So this one, these are all, I believe, the 75% merino, 25% nylon, superwash, four ply yarn, 420 meters per 100 gram skein. This one is winter berries. So it's this sort of cream, but it's got these black and red speckles and then these sort of darker red sections as well. And it's beautiful and I can't wait to knit it up. Probably gonna be, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Probably socks. Um, so this is again the same base. This one is Icy Waters and again you've got that grey. Do I like grey by any small chance? Maybe. With this blue and this paler blue and the darker grey and it's beautiful. She takes a lot of inspiration from flowers and nature but she also does some really interesting... She had like a rainforest club last year that I followed on Instagram and I thought was really beautiful. This is Crocuses in the Snow. Crocuses in the Snow. Um, and yeah, again, cream base with these sort of purples and blues. It's really, you know, good for this time of year because there are crocuses coming up. I don't have any snow here in South Gloucestershire, but still very pretty, very lovely. Um, so these came with a few things. Um, stitch markers, firstly. So there's, she came, you got this little card, which is sort of her business card. And then attached to it is a stitch marker. Got this little birdie thing which I love birds, so excellent. And then like a little green boba tea, and I love it. I have used them, I just put them back on the cards. I use them with the Huhu Tonga as uh, progress markers. Um, so I could measure the distance is easier. The good thing, sort of every, if you're sort of measuring 40 centimeters, every 10 centimeters, put one of these, and then you only have to measure from the last one rather than trying to measure from the beginning again. Uh, but I just put them back on the cards when I was finished, just so I could show them off, and I really like them. I think it's boba tea, it looks like boba tea. Adorable, absolutely adorable. Also with it came, one of the orders came a three millimeter crochet hook, which I don't crochet, so that's just amusing to me. And then a sort of tapestry needle. And I don't necessarily know why. Like, I feel like I should email her and be like, is these deliberate or accidental? Because if they're accidental, you can have them back. Um, but if they're deliberate, then I'll keep them. They don't look, I don't know. But they're cool. And the yarn's very pretty. This is my birthday present, I'm very happy. Um, I'm gonna have a future project section later in the video. I will discuss 
what I, some of my potential intentions with this, but in the meantime we can just admire the prettiness. Oh, look at the prettiness of that. Um, okay, and on to the section I'm going to jokingly refer to as Crayer Bearer is a terrible influence. Um, so, as I said, go check out Crayer Bearer. She does excellent podcast episodes and she recently, she's always talked about how great Woolly Knits is and uh, they're sort of 100% um, pure wool, British wool cones, which is... Um, something I've also wanted to be interested, I've been interested in trying and I've been interested in getting for a while. I just, you know, I'm, I didn't feel the need to particularly go out and buy it. And then she has a discount code and she's running the cone along, which is you knit from a cone. So my blanket, I'm going to enter for the cone along. I don't know whether to enter the sweater vest as well, because I'm knitting that from a holst cone. Um, and I've got some other cone projects that I might cast on as an excuse, use her I uh, use her sort of cone along to cast on as an excuse. Um, but I ended up putting in an order. And I, I you know, honestly, this one's got the cone on. I, somewhere there is one that has its label taken off. Um, so I ended up getting, let's see if I can fit them all in shot. I probably can't. One cream, no, two creams, that was it. There's the other one. Uh, Two navy blues. Oh god, I'm hocking the camera, aren't I? Ah, two navy blues. One red. What kind of red is this? This was the cassette red. And then... Foxglove purple. Yeah, I went a bit overboard. Maybe not, I don't know. I sort of have plans for all of this bar. One of them. Um, but yeah, so these are 100% British wool. Um, the reason I quite like the whole British wool thing is because uh, one of the biggest contributors to pollution is the shipping industry. So rather than this um, being shipped across the world, it's very much it was re it was reared, sheared, spun, dyed all in the UK, which does reduce its footprint. I mean, it's not perfect because, of course, you know the dyeing process isn't the best. But it's sort of, I feel it's better. Um, so I do want to try and source more British wool. It's why I quite like West Yorkshire spinners. Because again, a lot of their wool is British wool. Not all of it, but you can sort of keep an eye on it and see which is which is British wool. Um, yeah. So it's something, it's something I'm interested in. Um, and they have such a beautiful range of colours as well. Uh, I mean, just looking at the colours that I've got here, like... These are all sort of my sort of colour palette, apart from maybe the red. I don't know what i but um, the red is something very specific. Um, but the purple and the blue is such a gorgeous blue, and this purple, I just saw it and I couldn't resist. So, I shall leave most of these in frame as we move on to... So that's all of my acquisitions, That's what this is what I have bought. Um, I'm now going to move on to the future projects section where I'll discuss the plans for this. So, as I've already mentioned, this cone is for my blanket. I will be using it for alternating squares in my blanket, just as a sort of colour cleanser, breaker? I don't know what it's called. Um, so that leaves this cream and this red, which I said is not my normal colour. Um, I'm not a massive red person. But, as I mentioned in my Projects of 2022 video, I wanted to make the festive Pullover by Ellie from Skein Deer Knits and I've decided that I wanted to do it in red and cream. Technically I was going to do it red base, this red base, which is sort of a... it's got darker fluff. Sort of a red, but I don't know if you can see it's got that darker undertone, it's all got a darker fluff to it which I quite like. I didn't really see that online. Um, but I, I just suppose it was a more muted red than the other red they had. I just sort of choose between reds, um, and I got this one. It's got this sort of darker, almost purplish, I don't know, lovely. And uh, this is going to be the main body of the sweater, the main colour is going to be this red, and then the contrast colour for all the little Christmas motifs. Because the festive pullover is a Christmas jumper, and I sort of want a Christmas jumper. Um, it's going to be in this cream. 
I do not need a whole cone for the contrast colour. Um, I'm going to do all over colour work, which with, I mean, given my experiences with the Huhu Otunga, I, it is going to take a while. It's something I want to cast on soon and I might have it by Christmas 2023 um, because, I mean, it is only two colour colour work, which is nice, but at the same time, it's going to take a while. And I think I'm going to let it take a while. I think, I think I'll end up with a, a product I'm happier with if I let it take a while. So that's the plan for those. Whether or not I have it cast on by the next one, I don't know. I might at least have a swatch done, but I'm I'm not really. So that's what those those two are set aside for. And that leaves the two navy, these two navy, which I'm going to hold double. And I am going to knit the, I think I've decided I'm going to knit, eventually when I get around to it, the portage, portage, I'm, very posh accents, this is always amusing. Cardigan by Melissa. I'm not even gonna try with that surname. I'm terrible with anything that's not sort of British as a surname. I I know I'm terrible and I hate butchering names and I'm really sorry. Um, but it's got, it's sort of a long cardigan, probably a good nice house style, I think, to sort of, not necessarily retire this cardigan, but at least sort of go with it. Um, so I can sort of use this one less. Um, I'm not going to throw out a perfectly usable cardigan just because I make a new one. Um, but I would like to replace some of the items I have that are store bought um, with items I made myself. Um, so I'm going to use this navy blue held double. That will be really nice. Um, and as for the purple, I have no plans for the purple. The purple was an impulse buy, which. I try very much not to do. I try not to impulse buy yarn. I try to just, you know, have a project in mind. And even if I don't use the yarn for that project, I try. I try to at least have an idea of what I want. And with this single cone of purple, I have no idea. Oh, with the blue, sorry. The reason why I have two cones with the blue um, is because I want to hold it double and it's sort of quite a long cardigan. It's going to take up quite a lot of yarn. So I do think I need the both cones. Right, okay, sorry, I thought I should have said that. Um, but with the purple, I have no idea. Probably a simple colour work jumper. There's some very nice simple patterns out there. I think I might, I think it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful shade of purple. Um, I'm just gonna keep holding it. It's pretty, pretty. Right, um, so on to what I want to do with the Moth and the Squid yarn back into picking those up and, and stroking them because they're merino so they are so soft like the the woolly knit stuff is sort of just it's just a wool blend i don't know if you know i don't think it says what kind of sheep it is but it's just a generic wool blend so it's sort of a, not as soft i think it does some people have said it softens up in the wash but um i try it next to my skin and it's a bit scratchy but i could probably wear it but we shall see um so with these as i've mentioned you know they're sock yarns so possibly a pair of socks I might also make a cowl. Um, I think, you know, it's very interesting because of course the cream is sort of an undyed and these are speckled on undyed. So I think I could do a very interesting color work with the cream and the yarn. That's always a possibility. I did want to potentially try one of the Jesse made tank tops with some of this yarn held double. Um, I wanted to try some of her patterns for a while I just have my own personal misgivings based on my body shape. Um, mainly because her patterns don't differ for the front and the back. And my front is very different to my back because I have quite a significant bust. Um, or it feels like I have a significant bust. I, I probably don't in comparison to some people, but um, it, it just, I just, Jumpers it's okay because jumpers aren't always meant to be fitted. When I make a fitted garment, you know, my fitted garments are different in the front and back. And I think that fits me a lot better. And I'm just concerned about the Jessie Mae. But a lot of people, you know, you see a lot of really good pictures of people wearing them and they look really good. And I'm just like, I think I'm just letting myself be ruled by something that necessarily doesn't really matter. Um, and I've been rambling, but... So any ideas for what you like to do with your hand-dyed yarn? I always feel a bit weird making that I've got a pair, I've got a couple of pairs of hand dyed yarn socks, 
I always feel a bit weird because they always get such use and there's a part of me that's like, you know, they deserve the use because they're so pretty. Same time, I don't like to ruin my pretty, pretty yarns. So I'd love to know, please leave in the comments what you do with your hand dyed yarns, you know. There's a part of me just like, just leave them on the shelf and look pretty. But I do like to also use things. So there's, you know, I'd love to see what your suggestions are, what sort of things you love to do with hand dyed, hand dyed yarn. Um, I think, that is it. Um, yeah. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Watching me ramble on for God knows how long. I do appreciate you sort of sticking around. Oh, I suppose I should discuss some life stuff. I was gonna, yeah. Things have been being weird. The dog got ill. The boiler broke, the car broke. I think I told you about the car breaking last time, but it's just. So much stuff has been breaking. Oh, um, yeah, it's just it's sort of been fixing things. Oh, and the garage roof is broken as well. The storm, the big storm, did remove a piece of our garage roof. It's sunny today, so I should go out and try and fix it, but I just don't want to. I want to knit. Um, also the dog's been ill, which is just, I don't think, it's just, uh, she's a sort of scavenger, she's, she's a rescue as I said, and she, she loves eating things off the ground, and no matter how hard I try to train her and stop her, I've yet to fully stop it, and she must have eaten something that disagreed with her, because she ended up very, very ill. And it was just a lot of effort to clean up after her, and you know, she just doesn't look, and she just looks sad and tired all the time, you know, just like, it's okay, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. I don't want to see my dog after. She's so cute. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. And if you want to see more videos, then please check out sort of the links at the end of the video and consider subscribing. I do this monthly podcast and sometimes I put out other videos in the middle. Um, I do hope to get some out this month, but we'll see. I also do some shorts every now and then. Um, if that's the sort of thing you like. You can also check out my Instagram and Ravelry, which are linked below in the description, but I'm not, I'm gonna admit, I'm not very active on either of them. Um, I do try to, at the end of projects at least, upload pictures and my notes on them. So hopefully you should see the Owly and the Hoover Tonga on there before this goes live. I, yeah. But thank you for watching and have a beautiful day. <laughs>